This is a 1986 Macintosh Plus, and it's from that innocent era before the internet ruined everything. But today, we're gonna do the unthinkable and get this thing online for under 50 bucks. We're browsing the web at 7.8 megahertz, so stay tuned. And if you enjoy taking old, innocent computers and subjecting them to the nightmare world that is the modern internet, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. The first real website didn't exist until 1991, so you can forgive this 1986 Mac for not coming with hardware or software to easily browse the web. But if you push this machine to just about the limits of its 4 megs of RAM and 7.8 megahertz 68,000 CPU, it is possible. Now, it used to be kind of a convoluted setup to get this thing online. First, you needed some sort of period accurate external SCSI hard disk because this thing didn't come with a hard drive. In fact, it only has a single 800K floppy drive. So this is essential. And then you needed some way to connect to a network because this thing doesn't have ethernet or a modem. But you could buy something like this, an Asante SCSI Ethernet adapter, and daisy chain it into your hard drive. An expensive solution, but it does work. But I am replacing all of these things with this. That's right, this is my network card and my hard drive. What, you can't see it? Coming a little closer. Yeah, a single SD card is going to have a virtual hard disk on it and an emulated SCSI network adapter. And we're doing it with the magic of this thing, the latest version of the blue SCSI. This is the external one, and it plugs into the SCSI port on the back of the Mac Plus, or any old SCSI computer, and what it does is basically magic. Don't you just love the look of these classic 1980s Macintosh computers? Simple, elegant, beige. Well, Spigen knows me a little too well and sent me this. It's the classic LS case for the iPhone 17 Pro series. Inspired by vintage Macintosh computers and the Apple Lisa, it is especially complimentary to the Mac Plus. Spigen developed this to celebrate Apple's 2026 50th anniversary. And there is a lot of attention to detail on this. All the cutouts and notches are mirrored to the things you'd find on a Mac Plus. The lanyard holder and the logo mirrors the Plus's logo placement on the front of the machine. And the lines on the camera bump evoke the famous Apple Snow White design language. Even the beveled edges on this thing match the Mac Plus's lustrous curves. And the buttons on the case echo the fonts on the real Max keyboard. And yes, it is glorious beige. A pretty nice match, actually. It's also a really nice case. Integrated MagSafe ring, lanyard cutout, and the durable protection that we've come to expect from Spigen. In fact, I've always used Spigen products on my phones. Just look at my Amazon history. I love how well these things hold up and just how committed to good design Spigen is. This classic LS case is brand new, just released, and quite special, and I expect they'll sell these pretty quickly. So if you'd like the coolest retro case in town, I'll put links down in the description below. Thanks again, Spigen, for sending me this beautiful case and sponsoring today's video. So this is a blue SCSI, and if you've watched any retro computer content on YouTube, you've probably seen one of these before. They come in external versions like this, or an internal version that you can mount inside your PC. And they use now a Raspberry Pi Pico to emulate a SCSI device, originally hard drives, but now also network adapters, and some more fun stuff coming in the future that we'll probably see on this channel. But if you'll notice, this is a Pico 2W. This thing has Wi-Fi, and if you create a special device file on your SD card, you can bridge this Wi-Fi chip to the emulated SCSI networking adapter and use this both as a hard drive and your Wi-Fi networking adapter. That's right, we're gonna add Wi-Fi to this Mac Plus. Okay, this is my favorite way to set up bootable disk images for vintage Macs. It's a website called The Infinite Mac, and it's basically a bunch of emulators in the browser that you can then export from. So we're gonna use Mac OS 7.1.
because that'll run fairly well on the Mac Plus and gives us more web browser options than System 6 does. The important thing here is we're going to use the saved HD and the infinite HD to grab and then export software. Okay, so we have a completely blank saved HD. What we're going to do is open up Macintosh HD, which is what we're booted from, and just drag the system folder over, basically installing Mac OS. Computers were pretty cool back in the day. Next, we're going to need some software. So the infinite HD is a bunch of software that we can access and just copy. So if we go into networking, we've got a bunch of stuff in here like Netscape Navigator. Drag that on over. A Wikipedia app, which <laughs> really interested to see how that runs on the Mac Plus. An SSH app so we can log in and maintain modern Unix systems as you do on your Mac Plus. And we'll get some other stuff like uh, Other Peak. It's kind of like a hacker tool. <laughs> uh, yeah, might as well just get all this stuff. But if that's not enough stuff, on Infinite Mac, we can actually search the Macintosh Garden for other software like iCab. There's no way iCab is going to run on a 68K Mac. Now it's all PowerPC. What else do we have? Mac Web. That's a very old web browser. All right, we have a, a version called Mac Web 2.0 C optimized for the Mac Plus. So we can go into the outside world, downloads, and there's the SIT file right from Macintosh Garden. What else do we want on here? A newer version of Mac TCP. And this download here has patches to make it more useful on a modern network. And I think we're pretty much ready to try to boot this on the real Mac Plus. So we can go settings, save disk image, save it as an HDA file. I'll just save over whatever I exported previously. And we can drag that right over to our blue SCSI. And I'll just change this file name to start with HD zero. So it's the zeroth hard drive, AKA the first hard drive in line. And we also have a blue SCSI bootstrap partition that we will copy to the SD card. That blue SCSI disk image is available for download on the Wi-Fi data port documentation page on bluescuzzy.com. I'm also going to use the blue SCSI INI file generator to create a Mac plus INI file. We'll stick that right on the SD card. And then we also need to edit the INI file to put the SSID and password for my Wi-Fi router. And the last thing we need to do is create a file called ne4.hda on the blue SCSI. I just did that with the touch command here in Mac OS. It can be an empty text file that you make in Notepad. But that is the stand-in for the network adapter at SCSI ID 4. We should now be able to boot this on our actual hardware. All right, SD card into the blue SCSI. Blue SCSI into the SCSI port on the Mac Plus. Now I have actually modified this with the diode mod, which provides power to the Blue SCSI from the Mac Plus, which it didn't do from the factory. If you didn't do that to your Mac Plus, you just have to hook this up to USB power. And here it is, our Wi-Fi enabled, internet ready, 1986 Mac Plus. Let's see if it boots our infinite Mac disk image. Oh yeah, it's booting. Yeah, check it out. There is our hard disk image exactly as we set it up on the website, now booting on actual hardware. Isn't the future magical? And on this Blue Scuzzy Bootstrap disk image, there's actually a lot of really helpful stuff. In addition to just Pico W setup, we have the drivers for the Dana port, the virtual Dana port, as well as Mac TCP setup, which I downloaded the latest version of this, so we'll use the one we downloaded. There's Open Transport setup, but we're gonna use Mac TCP. Open Transport's actually a little more advanced, but Mac TCP. I know it and I love it. All right, let's mount this disk copy six image. Yeah, that's a pretty advanced feature for the time. Double clicking a disk image to mount it on the desktop, just like you do today. 
Only this has Moof the Dog Cow. And in our virtual disk image, we have the installer. And we'll know that the emulated Ethernet device works if the installer can detect it. Because this installer detects your networking equipment and installs the appropriate driver. Yeah, it supports all of these different network cards. It will detect, hopefully, this SCSI link. Yes, it did! Dataport SCSI link. That's our virtual device. And we'll just allow this to install, I suppose. All right, so far, so good. Installing Mac TCP is super simple. Just drag it onto the system folder. How come my modern MacBook Pro isn't this easy to use? All right, let's do one last restart. All right, now we'll do control panels. There's our Mac TCP. Oh uh, yeah, switch it to ethernet built in. And then we just have to configure this. My gateway is 192.168.1.1. Class C address. Not sure how to actually figure this out, but someone else figured it out on 68K MLA. So I'm just gonna use their number. 126.259.2.1. Node, I don't know, 84. We use Cloudflare for DNS. And we might be online. Let's try out Mac TCP ping and see if we can connect to stuff. We'll send the first ping to my router. 168.1.1. Timeout. All right, let's do a quick restart. Oh my God, check it out. We are online. We're not fast and we're dropping some of our pings, but we just pinged Cloudflare. Let's see, does our DNS work? Google.com? Oh, it does. Look at that. We're pinging Google from a 1986 Mac Plus. <laughs> oh, that is ridiculous. Okay, now that we're online, let's try to browse the internet. All right, I have no idea if Netscape Navigator 2 can run in this amount of RAM. Let's find out. It cannot. Now, this was back in the day when one program crashed, the whole computer crashed. Don't miss that. All right, how about Mac Web 2.0? Ooh, I think it's working. Oh, it's working. And according to the Macintosh Garden, where I pulled this version of Mac Web from, it's supposed to be optimized to run on black and white Macs, though the starting window size goes off the screen here. These old Macs have a ridiculously low resolution. It's only 512 by 342, much smaller than the 640 by 480 that most programs expect to be the minimum window size. Let's see if we can't adjust this ourselves. All right, here we go. First web page we're gonna visit Frogfind.com. Oh, it's going! Look at that! And might I remind you, this is over Wi-Fi. There's Frogfind! And maybe some things aren't perfect. For some reason it wanted to download this image instead of display it. Well, let's see. Mac Plus. Now, if you're not familiar with Frogfind, it's actually a website that I built, which is a search engine that works on extremely old computers and web browsers like this one. This is DuckDuckGo search results, but presented in extremely basic HTML. This is actually working pretty well on here. And what FrogFind also does is pass all of these links through the same parser that I built, which strips all the crazy JavaScript and CSS out. So you can actually click through these search result links to view the web page. In effect, you can browse the modern internet on literally any web browser. Look at that. We're browsing everymac.com through FrogFind. And it freaking works. Yeah, I've gotten this machine online. In fact, one of the very oldest videos we did on this channel used this thing to get it online. And it is always kind of a weirdly anachronistic, bizarre experience browsing the internet on such an old limited machine. Honestly, it's kind of a Zen-like experience. The one bit black and white display is quite pleasing on the eyes. Scrolling isn't that bad. 
It's certainly not fast, but it kind of just works. All right, back on Infinite Mac here. What I'd like to do is search the Macintosh garden for some more internet applications. We'll save them to a new blank saved HD, export that, boot from our original image, but access this as another drive. That sounds convoluted, but it'll make sense here in a second. The Macintosh garden, let's see here. Want to look for SSH. And yeah, here's Mac SSH. I guess this one, 2.1, what's the latest? Oh, that's French, okay. 68K Mac SSH, which we'll download into the outside world. There it is. All right, let's see what else we can find. All right, Mac WWW, a very old web browser. 1992, the first web browser for the Mac OS platform. Well, I'm sold. There it is. Man, Infinite Mac is pretty convenient. Yeah, let's get better Telnet. Okay, I've downloaded a whole bunch of stuff that we can try out. I don't know how much of it will actually run in four megs of RAM, but we're gonna find out. Yeah, the Wikipedia app launches at least. When I do just search. All right, Mac. Uh-oh. Oh, it's pulling suggestions from Wikipedia. Oh no. Mac plus. Oh, well, look at that. We're reading the Wikipedia page for Macintosh Plus on a Macintosh Plus. It's not fast, but it's alive. Oh boy, that's really not fast. Huh, that's entirely usable. We can click links, I assume? Oh yeah. I have to say, this Wikipedia app is mighty impressive. And here we go, we have two saved HDs now. I'm just gonna rename the second one here to internet stuff. Look at all this stuff we have to play with now. I was still running into memory issues. I really wanted to try to SSH into a modern computer from the Mac Plus, but I don't think we have anywhere near enough memory for Mac SSH. Nope. Perhaps we can run a web server from the Mac Plus. Is it running? No? Well, I don't think that works. Oh, wait. Started up okay. Um, where is it? All right, let's try Mac HTTP 2.6. Oh my God, I think it's working. Look at that server running on port 80. Is this thing really serving a web page right now? Hang on a second. Oh my God, look at that. We are connected to the Mac Plus, which is serving this web page very slowly, but it's working. How funny would it be if I connected this to the broader internet and got people to actually visit a web page hosted on a Mac Plus? Oh boy, it is really slow, which is hilarious. Now look at that, there's our activity. We had a high of five connections for some reason, all of them being me, I assume, yeah. How freaking cool is that? Well, if we've learned anything today, I think it's that the blue SCSI is basically magic. If you have an old computer with a SCSI connection, you really can't go wrong buying a cheap open source blue SCSI. It's just so cool that a device like the blue SCSI exists. Now you can not only collect and look at old computers, but use them for almost useful tasks. I mean, we were browsing the freaking internet and I'm half serious about using this as a web server. If you want to see me set up an actual Mac Plus web server and connect it to the internet and maybe try to get it to the front page of Hacker News to see if this thing explodes, let me know in the comments down below. But that'll do it for today's video. As always, thank you very much for watching. And I just want to give a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and channel members. Thank you so much, each and every one of you, for supporting me and supporting this channel and all the weird stuff I do. I am so very grateful and I just could not do this without you.